Welcome back to the News at 10. Charles Zeruka has more on the 20 goals scored on day two of the preliminaries of the Nash Channel's National Kids Cup and other stories in the world of sports. Welcome to Sports News. 16 schools have progressed to the next round of the Lagos preliminaries of the Season 9 of the Channel's National Kids Cup. A total of 22 goals were scored today. On, well, that's day two, with four matches each played at Oniko and Campus Square. Our sports correspondent, Osino Konakban, reports. Let's begin from Campus Square. Explanza Primary School Ikorodzu continues the festival of goals by humiliating Abino Mololu 9-0. What will he do? He shoots another one. Still there at its goal number seven. The second game between Mao Primary School and Mass Mass was made for TV. It was a thrilling match. The impact of goalkeeper Chima Ibebuke was felt. It was scored three. Goalkeeper saves it. Even the defenders had their moments. It runs off the goalkeeper and the ball is not in. I told you, it was made for TV. Number nine gets a chance. It's in. In the end, the Mao boys showed character to secure a 2 1 victory. Next up is Army Children's School playing against St. Paul's Anglican from Lagos Island. Samuel Oladele scored a brace, but it was goalkeeper Favor Ibe who stole the show when he abandoned his primary duties to score from a set piece. The boys from Abulegba won 3-0. That's how these kids from Troika School welcome spectators to Unicorn Stadium. They're here to cheer their team as the trade tackles with Green Haven in Sherry. The support paid off as Troika scored in the opening two minutes of the game. Moments later, Green Haven leveled up and that's when their cheerleaders showed up. It was indeed a tight game. Penalties had to decide the winner, and it was Troika. Troika marches to the next stage of the Channel's National Kids Cup. Methodist Primary School showed class and didn't need penalties to see off Rolex Children's School 3 0. And it's going number two for Methodist. Definitely, this is signed, sealed, and delivered. Last year's finalist, Lincrest Primary School from Ikurudu, also booked a place in the last 16 after beating Muslim Association 4 2 via penalties. And it takes it. With just five goals scored in regulation time for Monikon Stadium, it means the competition is getting tougher. Which teams will go beyond the round of 16? The three will provide answers. Austin, Okonakban, Channels Television News. Still some way to go on the Channels National Kids Cup. But for the UEFA Champions League, it's closing in on the finish line. Italian side, Juventus closed in on the second Champions League final in three seasons as Gonzalo Higuain struck twice to beat Monaco in the semi-final first leg. This was another victory built on organized defensive work with goalkeeper Gianluigi Buffon making a couple of key saves to help usher in a ninth Juve clean sheet in 11 Champions League matches this season. Massimiliano Allegri's side showed just how efficient they can be and Monaco's task looks huge in the second leg as Juve have not lost a home fixture by two goals since April 2013. And that's it on Sports News. Back to Amarachi with the rest of the news at 10. South African President Jacob Zuma appears unruffled about being booed at a major May Day rally on Monday in his country. He has responded that he has no problem being booed as his country is a democracy, not a dictatorship. Workers booed Mr. Zuma, calling on him to resign during a rally in Bloemfontein City. The president says, quote, I am very happy that South Africans have matured in democracy and they have a president they can talk to about whatever is in their minds. They're not going to be arrested or harassed. When asked if he would heed the people's call and step down, he said he would leave office, but not now. Eight people were today killed in a suicide attack apparently targeted at a convoy belonging to the NATO mission. All of them were civilians. 
Two vehicles were badly damaged along with several other passing cars. Reporters on the ground say pieces of glass were everywhere from shattered windows. ISIS has been in Afghanistan since 2015, claiming responsibility for many of the attacks there ever since and this one. Now this one comes three weeks after the U.S. dropped its largest non-nuclear bomb known as the mother of all bombs on a tunnel complex used by ISIS in Afghanistan, reportedly killing many militants. Britain's Brexit minister, David Davis, says he does not recognise any of the figures published in the media for the bill Britain could face when she leaves the European Union. The Financial Times has said the EU demands amounted to a gross figure of €100 billion. Euros. He said Britain has come to the end of paying vast sums of money every year to the European Union. Hours after he made the comment, British Prime Minister Theresa May accused the Union of trying to interfere in general election scheduled for June this year. They've offered 50 billion, 60 billion, 100 billion. We've actually not been given an official number. And whilst we'll meet our international obligations, uh, we'll meet the legal ones, not the, not the best guesses and wishes of the Commission. And the main news again. The president was today absent at the Federal Executive Council meeting. The Minister of Information, Haji Lai Mohammed, defended the president, saying he was observing his doctor's orders and that he has been transparent about his health status. Also today, the Senate committee opened another can of worms on the suspended secretary to the state government, Babachir Lawal, alleging he spent 530 million naira on grass cutting in Yobe State. Customs boss uh, and President Jacob Zuma says he has no problem being booed off stage at a rally on May Day in Bloemfontein. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.